What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. Are we on the ice? No, we are not on the ice. Are we talking about ice fishing? Yes, we are talking about ice fishing. And uh, a lot of times when I do these videos, um, it's, it's about content that you guys want to see or, or questions that we get asked just kind of over and over and over repetitively, right? And uh, obviously this time of year, it's a lot of stuff about ice fishing, right? And uh, we are well into our ice season now. We've probably been at it for a couple of weeks. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the content. I do appreciate you guys watching. And uh, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out a lot and hopefully it helps you guys a lot. Um, but yeah, what we're talking about today is one of the most common questions we've been getting asked, especially when we're doing these tip-up videos, is rigging on tip-ups, line on tip-ups, leaders on tip-ups, what kind of tip-ups, all this kind of stuff. And does it make a difference in how many fish you're going to catch? Absolutely. And tweaking small things kind of throughout the process, you know, helps, um, you know, catch more fish kind of no matter what you're talking about, right? Whether that's tip ups or open water trolling or graph setup or all these little things. Um, and you know, experience will teach you a lot, obviously. Um, but for those of you that are maybe new to ice fishing, or just looking at kind of what I do when I'm rigging a lot of my tip ups and what I'm using, um, this should be a great video for you guys. So we're going to dig right into it. Um, there's two kinds of tip-ups I use, one mainly that I use, and that is your standard beaver dam tip-up, right? Why do I use them? Because they're the smoothest, the best spool out there, right? Um, a lot of your cheaper tip-ups, more inexpensive tip-ups, um, they might have a plastic spool on there, and when they pull line out, it's much more herky-jerky. When you pick it up at a store, when you realize it, when it's 72 degrees inside of a, uh, a tackle shop, no, you probably won't. But when it starts getting out there, when you get on the ice and it starts getting cold and all that kind of stuff, you're going to see cheaper spools gum up and just get much more sticky and there's going to be much more resistance. And you see it a lot, especially I fish in northern Wisconsin walleyes, which might be some of the most finicky fish in existence, I think, um, as I do it every day and I still struggle to catch them some days. But um, you want a spool that is very free, free floating, right? And uh, what I mean by that is, let's say a fish comes up and grab it and starts swimming away. You don't want any resistance on that. You want that fish to feel like that is as natural as possible, right? Like he just got a free meal. And uh, a lot of times what you'll see with spools that gum up and are much stickier as the other fish come up, and you'll get a lot of drops. And what I mean by that is you'll get a flag, you'll go over to it. You know, a lot of times when you, if you watch that underwater camera, how these fish eat, a lot of times they're sitting here lethargic off the side, and then it's a big short burst of, you know, maybe a foot or two feet. They eat that thing, and then it's a slow paddle off most of the time, right? And when they're doing that slow paddle off, if they feel resistance, a lot of times they drop. So a lot of times um, you'll still get that flag, uh, but you'll probably get more drops. So that's why we use the beaver dams. The other kind I have is a circular round beaver dam. This is still the same beaver dam spool and everything like that. It's just in a different style of tip up. And the round tip up is meant to obviously insulate a hole. Um, and I just have a whole bunch of these you know, two tip ups, the standard beaver dam, which probably most of us are used to seeing, and then kind of the round style too. And uh, I don't really pick one, you know, each day over the other one. Uh, they also make, um, and I'll go ahead and link a lot of this stuff down below. They also make like a circular tip up cover, which helps insulate that hole, keep ice out of your hole. And obviously you get there and you can use that with these ones. So I'll go ahead and link a lot of this stuff down below. But um, yeah, that's what I'm using for tip ups. And uh, well, you guys will continue to see me using for tip ups. Um, it's just a time tested, time proven, effective rig. That is for sure. But the main question we get asked is a lot about rigging tip ups, what we're doing and things like that. Now, for the main line on tip up, you want something that number one, sheds water, number two, is soft on your hands, and it's thick enough where if you if you try to run like a 10 pound braid on a main tip up line, every time you set the hook, you're gonna be cutting your fingers, right? It's gonna be incredibly difficult to do that. Um, so what I run, I run this beaver dam. This is 30 pound, and this is just kind of your standard tip up line. It sheds water, and it's very soft, right? And it's kind of, it's, it's a basically a braided line, um, but it's not, like the braids you would use in the summer. You can see it's very thick, right? I don't know how well the camera's seeing that, maybe a little bit. It's very thick, so you can get a good grip on it and set the hook and uh, you know, get a good idea how much tension's on there just by grabbing it like that. And this is what I use, and uh, it comes in 50 yard spools. You can go up to like 50 pound, I think, uh, but I run 30 on pretty much everything. And uh, very rarely, if, I, always, I always say it like this, um, to break 30 pound test mainline, you need to put 30 pounds of pressure on that fish, right? The fish's teeth will never be on this. So go get, go to your garage, tie on like 30 pounds of cinder blocks or rocks and see if you could pick it up. You cannot physically lift 30 pounds with a line like this. So you're never gonna put over 30 pounds of line on something like this, right? On the leader, that matters a lot. You might be going over 30 pounds sometime if you're fishing for like big toothy pike or stuff like that. And that is primarily due to their teeth, right? Uh, but the 30 pound line, I use that for everything. Walleye, pike, a little bit of everything. 50 yard spool, 
more than enough to fill up a beaver dam, right? So that's my main line. Now, where it starts to get a little bit interesting and a little bit different is when you start talking about rigging. You know, what are you using for hooks? What are you using for weight? What are you using for your line? And you key all of this stuff into what you're fishing for, right? I'm not gonna use the same rig if I'm tip up fishing for perch that I will for pike, right? And I switch that up quite a bit. So, the main thing that I fish with, obviously, for walleyes is, uh, or is I fish for walleyes with a lot of my tip ups, like I'm sure most of you two do too. Um, walleyes and pike primarily. And the number one way I rig up for walleyes um, will be with a smaller pound test fluorocarbon line. And I have been using Berkeley Vanish for years. A lot of you guys who are, what's like the really expensive one? Something red label like Seeger maybe? Yeah, Seeger. I even have some in bigger pound tests that I use here. Um, Berkeley Vanish is pretty inexpensive overall. I've had good luck on it for a very long time. Um, it's, you know, it's fluorocarbon, so it's very um, non-visible in the water. It's a very see-through line, and that's the main reason I use it, right? And I uh, basically I'll use between eight and 10 pound, pretty much that's what I use. Especially if I'm, I know I'm only targeting walleyes for the most part, and um, I'm fishing a, lakes, a lot of lakes that have a visibility of like five, six, seven, eight plus feet of water, right? A lot of the lakes I fish might have eight to 12 feet of visibility, right? Where you can see bottom in that lake in those depths. So I want a line that's very thin and very see-through most of the time I'm running eight pound Berkeley Vanish fluorocarbon, right? And the other thing to do, and we'll just kind of, we might as well just rig one up here. And I actually got another camera here. I don't even know if we'll use this camera angle or not, but we'll get it going. So it's rolling right now. And uh, let's just rig one up here quick, right? And um, you know, if, if you're fishing a lot of bodies of water, like I said, that are clear, like the bodies of water that I am fishing, you're going to want to have a longer lead, right? Like a 12 inch lead just isn't gonna cut it. Cause you want to get this main thick, heavy tip up line, like you can see here, away from those fish, right? You don't want them to be seeing that portion of the line, right? So I like to tie most of my leads probably like four feet long, four or five feet long. And the reason for that is just like I talked about, to basically get it away from the fish. We gotta break this off. I just pulled this one off the rack. It has not even been rigged yet this year. Um, but you wanna be getting this main line basically away from the fish, right? And that's why you go to these longer leads. And uh, I have been rigging them this way for years and it is kind of the way which I have found most productive, right? So, got our 30 pound main line on here. I'm gonna obviously put it through the spool here. And then I'm just going down to a swivel. And if I'm walleye fishing, I like to be using a smaller swivel, right? And uh, something, swivels, and what I basically use, it's called an ant swivel, um, or a crane swivel is probably what most of you guys call them. It's very small, looks something just like that right there, right? And I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna tie it on to my main line. This camera is kind of sort of picking it up a little bit. I'm gonna tie that onto my main line, right? Just like that right there. So that's tied onto my main line. Cut the tag off. Probably doesn't even matter that much. But yeah, cut the tag off. Now we got the obviously the swivel. So if I can get it to focus maybe for me. Now we got the swivel on the main line here, right? Now I'm gonna take my eight pound fluorocarbon, my Berkeley Vanish, and I'm just gonna tie that on to the swivel here. And then we'll pretty much be in business. And hooks, just like the line size, varies a lot depending on what you're fishing for, right? Somebody's probably wondering somewhere what kind of knot I tie. I go through the eye twice and I make a gap in my fingers. I think it's like called an improved clinch knot where you go through the eye twice, spin it up like five to seven times, go back through the double eye you made, wet the knot a little bit, cinch it tight, right? And uh, yeah, that's that. So now, like I said, I like to have about four feet of this, four or five feet of this, which is probably somewhere about there. The walleyes aren't gonna know if it's four feet, eight inches or five feet, um, as long as it's long enough to get that away from the fish, right? Now, hooks, this is, this is kind of an important part. And uh, I'll run a whole bunch of different kinds of hook, but you wanna key it into the size bait you're using, right? You wouldn't use a super small number 12 treble hook um, if you're fishing big walleye suckers for big walleyes, right? Um, you just, they wouldn't hold the minnow well, the minnow would keep coming off, and it's just a, not a lot of hook for the size of minnow, right? So most of the time I'm running just kind of your standard walleye suckers or like your medium sized shiners, right? And my absolute favorite hook, which I rig up with, and I'll kind of show it to the small camera here, is these Mustad triple grips. 
and it's actually a crankbait hook um, is I think what they were designed for. But basically this hook, if you can see it here, it's got uh, kind of a weird gap on it, right? It's almost like a really wide gap and then the point kind of comes back in. And they're incredibly sticky. Uh, Berkeley uses a lot of this style hook um, on most of their crankbaits and it's a very good hook. And uh, you want a good gap and that is one reason why you use this. A treble hook with too tight of a gap won't hold the minnow and uh, in this scenario it would not hook the fish well. You want a wide gap because that fish is eating a pretty decent sized minnow, right? And uh, you gotta hope when you pull on that line that obviously the hook goes you know, somewhere into them. So having a wider gap is absolutely key for this kind of presentation. And these are number eights, number eight uh, Mustad triple grips. And there we go, it's on the line, right? So we got four feet of fluorocarbon, number eight Mustad triple grip hook up there, right? And that is the hook that I do 99% of my walleye fishing with. Um, and then obviously we need some weight on there. And a lot of guys will kind of go back and forth in this kind of part. What do you use? You know, do you put an inline weight so it doesn't pinch the line? You know, what do you do there? I still use the standard just uh, split shot like that. I go with one of the bigger size split shots you can buy, and I'll explain why. And another big deal here is what a lot of guys want to do is they want to get that weight way far away from the minnow. So I got the hook in this hand and the weight in this hand. They want to do something like this right here. The reason you don't want to do that, and you can watch this on your graph or your flasher a lot. Let's say you're fishing in, let's say, you know, 12 feet of water like we were today. You put this on here like this with like three feet between the weight and the hook. And those walleyes are relating very close to bottom. Well, what you can see happen a lot is when you have a fish come in, the minnow will actually end up swimming up above your weight like this, right? So now you are three feet lower or higher than you want to be just to the swivel. And then another three feet higher than that um, because that's how far the minnow can swim above that weight, right? So I like to put it very close to the hook, less than a foot most of the time. And most of the time I'll go like eight to 10 inches here, right? Somewhere about like that. I got the hook in this hand, this one here. And you, you probably honestly should not bite split shots. My grandpa told me that when I was a kid, but um, oh well. So yeah, here's our rig right here, right? We got about eight, maybe 10 inches in there between the split shot and the hook. Go ahead and show her, there's the weight. And there's our hook, right? And the reason I like, it basically pins them in the strike zone, right? So if this minnow, if a walleye comes in, let's say this is the bottom of the lake, he comes in and he's coming up to bite this, the minnow can only go to here, right? He can't go way up here out of the strike zone, especially in the winter when water temps are incredibly cold. You wanna pin that bait in the strike zone. And uh, the strike zone might be different kind of no matter where you are, but you wanna keep that bait where you think those fish are gonna be, right? So that's kind of the setup there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much my standard walleye tip up setup right there. Now, one thing I'll change, obviously if I'm on a body of water where maybe it's a lot of smaller fish or maybe it's late winter and fish are keyed in on smaller bait, like let's say a fathead or something like that. What I will put on then is a lot, or we were up at Red Lake doing this. I will put on these smaller octopus hooks and I like the ones that have a little bit of color on. I don't know why, I don't know if the fish do. In stain systems, I'd say they probably do a little bit. Uh, but that's kind of the deal there. And I want to say that this is an, what size is this? Man, what size is this? I'm not sure what size this is, but I want to say it's an eight or a 10. In fact, I really want to say it's an eight on that one right there. And I'll put on those. And I like those for fishing, those smaller minnows. It's less bulky than treble. And one big tip, if you are going to be running, and you can do it on bigger minnows too, if you upsize um, your, sing, your, your hook size too. But one thing I will say, Let's say the tip of my finger here is the head of the minnow. Right here is the head of the minnow and this is the tail of the minnow. You wanna be hooking this thing like this right here. So the front of the hook is towards the head of the minnow. What you don't wanna do is hook that minnow like this right here, where the tip of the hook is towards the back of the minnow. You don't wanna do that. And the reason you wanna hook it with the tip, front tip of the hook towards the head of the minnow, so you, wanna, you'd, you would want to come through the minnow like this right here is so that when that fish grabs that and swims away, most of the time they eat them head first. And when you set that hook, and he's got that minnow going down head first, the hook comes right out and into the fish. If your tail first, if your minnow's sitting here like this, when you go to set, the hook's naturally gonna leverage like this and go either down into the minnow or it's gonna come out 
upside down, right? And you don't want that. You want that thing going right into the top of the minnow or the top of the fish's mouth. So uh, kind of a good tip there. And we were doing that on Red Lake, Red Lake, catching a ton of fish that way. So that's kind of the two setups I use or to my two rigging systems. If I'm, you know, if I'm 99% sure what I'm doing that day is going walleye fishing. Now, we all do that kind of fishing that's like tip up fishing where it's like, who knows what we might catch, right? And uh, a lot of times, you know, for us in Northern Wisconsin, Northern Minnesota, if we're doing a lot of this, you know, whatever might bite situation where there's a high likelihood we're gonna catch some pike in the mix, which if a lot of times if we're fishing weeds, which a lot of us are, um, ends up happening, because obviously the pike love the weeds as well, and so do the walleyes, and so do the bass, and everything loves the weeds, right? But in, in scenarios where there's a high likelihood I'm gonna end up catching a pike in the mix, I will move up in pound test, right? And most of the time what I go with is this 20 pound test Seeger, blue label right here. I've been running this for a bunch of years and I don't think they make that vanish in a really high size or they don't have it in store. So this is kind of what I went to going to here. And it's a good mix. Can you really jaw jack a, a 20 pound pike on this? No, you can't. Can you set the hook and land a 20 pound pike on this? Much higher likelihood than the eight pound? Yes. <clears throat> is there a high likelihood you're gonna catch walleyes on this? Yes, right? And you always wanna be going with the most you can get away with. 20 pound, 25 pound, it's kind of the most I feel like I can really get away with when I'm in a scenario um, where I feel like I can catch walleyes too, right? We've all had that experience where we've been throwing a musky bait on a 100 pound line and um, caught a walleye, but that's not really like, very likely most of the time, right? Um, so yeah, most of the time I'm doing this, I'm doing the same thing. You know, I'm cutting off a length of about four feet and then I go up in my hook size, right? And then I will go to something like a number four or a number six hook like this here, right? And this is just a different color of hook here, but same deal. I'll tie it up, wrap it up, get it on there. And a lot of times when we're doing this kind of mixed bag style fishing, you know, we might run a lot bigger minnows just, you know, to get some of those bigger pike to bite too. Um, but, you know, running this smaller pound test, this 20 pound fluorocarbon, we don't give up on the shot of catching walleyes too. And nothing's worse than going out and setting up a huge tip up spread with your eight pound flora and finesse walleye rigs on a huge weed bed. And every time you go over to a line, set the hook and you break off on a pike, right? So this is what I do to kind of get around that. And when I'm doing this mixed bag fishing, that's what I'm using right there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. And you know, same thing, if you're gonna go up and run even bigger minnows, then obviously you gotta add a little bit more weight too and a little bit bigger swivel. You gotta key all that stuff in. Now on the far extreme side, what I'll do if I'm exclusively fishing for big pike, right? And uh, pike are generally much less line shy than you know the walleyes and the smallmouths and the perch and stuff like that. So if I'm gonna be fishing for exclusively pike, what I go to is this 50 pound or 30 pound. Most of the time I go 50 if I know I'm on a big pike hunt. This surf strand, this all, I think it's called American fishing wire. Yeah, it is, American fishing wire. This, but this seven strand, strand line, right? And this is the same thing we tie like our musky sucker rigs up in, in, you know, 135 pound. But this stuff obviously cannot be bit through, right? They call it like piano wire, basically. It cannot be bit through. It's flexible, um, yet it can, can't be bit through, obviously, it's metal. And uh, tying this stuff up is a little bit different. If I was gonna go up 50 pounds or higher, I would absolutely 100% crimp it, right? But I'm gonna kind of show you what I can do here. And most of the time I'll tie these rigs up the same. What I'll do is I'll kind of run it through, get a bunch of slack in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an overhand knot. And then after you're done with the overhand knot, don't cinch it all the way off. So there's my overhand knot, right? You can see the hook is in there. There's, we got it kind of messed up here a little bit. We got to ease it back down through here. There we go. So here is my overhand knot in the wire, right? And you can kind of see that right there. Now I'm going to get it to right about there. So it's not fully cinched down, but there's just a little gap in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both ends of this and I'm going to pull it backwards, right? Now what it's done is that overhand knot has bit and it's basically created a little loop in there, right? And most of the time overhand knots are terrible in fishing line. Um, but I have not had an issue doing this with wire at all. And this is the same thing I do with my musky sucker rigs for muskies, so you know I can take the abuse. I'll throw a crimp on there, uh, but the crimp's just kind of to hold the tag and kind of a safeguard, right? Now all I'll do is just the same thing again, except instead of making it bite and go backwards, 
I will cinch it basically all the way down here. So now it is cinched all the way down. So now what I have is I got still got this same loop in here and a tight overhand knot right on top of it. We'll see if I can get the camera to show it a little bit better here. There we go. That's kind of the shot we're looking for right there. So that thing is just kind of swinging freely in that loop. So now all I'm going to do is the same thing. And most time when I'm fishing for big pike, I like to go with a bigger hook, right? Which is kind of what we got on here. We got these much bigger um, hooks on here, these number four. And uh, I'll take the other hook and basically, I, most time I fish for big pike, I'm running dead bait. Obviously you can do this with just kind of your bigger sucker minnows too. Now I'll take this other one and you want to kind of push it up close to the other hook because you can kind of play with the amount of slack you're going to get in this here. So I'll cinch that one up and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create that little tiny loop in there. So there we go. I got it right there. Cinch it up a little bit more to about there. Now I'm going to grab both tags and I'm going to pull on them going backwards like that. Now I'm going to take it again. Got a hook stuck in my hand. There we go. I'm going to take it again, do another overhand knot, and this one I'm going to cinch down right on top of that loop. In the second here, you're going to kind of see the finish product. I don't think I have a pliers in here to really cut these tags, so you guys will just have to kind of imagine what this is going to look like here in a second. But there we go. So now what I have is basically two hooks in tandem, right? And this one's pretty free floating, so it pivots a lot. And this one's also free floating in that loop. Now you would take and cut this tag right here off, and then you'd just be left with it out to your main line like this, right? But what I do is, so this is obviously your first hook in line here. I take this one and I put it right behind the back, or what I call like the balance point of the minnow. You know, if your minnow's like this here, I'll take it and put it right in the middle of that thing. And then I take this other hook, the last hook on the rig, and I'll put it right behind the head. So now what I have is a perfectly balanced minnow down there. And uh, you know, one hook's right behind the head, the other one's right behind the middle of the back, and uh, it's a perfect two hook rig for hunting big pike that you can't get bit off on because it's just straight seven strands. So that's kind of the rigging there, right? Um, we kind of went through it um, for walleyes, you know, for, for kind of your mixed bag stuff, and then obviously for the pike. So that's what I'm doing, and uh, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you have any more questions, let me know. We'll probably answer them sometimes throughout the ice season. Hopefully this video wasn't too painful for you guys to watch. Um, but I, yeah, I do appreciate you guys watching. It's late at night right now. I got to get rigged up because I'm heading back on the ice tomorrow. Um, if you're heading on the ice, make sure you be safe. Stay tuned for more content. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.